Newton's first law of motion. Here we are. Our buddy Newton has three laws, and today we're going to talk about his first. We have a fun activity planned for Monday that is directly related to Newton's first law, so you're going to want to get through this so you're ready to do the activity on Monday. Recognize these guys? I know they've got a new movie coming out soon. Okay, what is a force? Not the force, but a force. A force is a push or a pull in its simplest terms. We can measure it, all right, but a force is basically just a push or a pull. This is our buddy Sir Isaac Newton. Looks a little funny, all right, but he's the man who wrote the laws, and he did a lot of other really amazing things, too. We'll learn more about him later. In his honor, since he invented them, Newtons, abbreviated with the capital N, are the unit of force. You may recognize this sort of spring scale. I'll bet you used them a fair amount last year. They measure in Newtons and in grams. Forces um, have many attributes. Forces can be both visible. We see this guy here. We can tell that the car is moving because the guy is pulling the car. I wouldn't do that, but he seems to think it's fun. And forces can also be invisible. Here, you can see the magnet, and you can see how the iron filings arrange themselves in patterns around it and how the compass arranges itself around it. But you can't actually see something, some visible thing reaching out and moving these objects. You just see the result of it. That's an invisible force. Also, also think about gravity. If you drop something, you don't see like a string pulling it to the floor. It just goes to the floor. Gravity is an invisible force. We are going to be calculating the net force. I think you're going to be really good at this because it's very similar to calculating the total velocity. In fact, it's almost exactly the same. The net force is the force that results from combining all forces acting on an object. Here in this example, we see all sorts of forces acting on this bike. We'll probably only use two or at most ever three at a time. Here's an example problem. Do the problem along on your paper as we do the example here. All right, here uh, I am, not really, but with pretend Mr. Barbash here moving the furniture. All right, we're going to do our workout. We're going to do them um, in layers. Right, so we have 30 newtons. To the left, that's Mrs. Barbash's force. Mr. Barbash's force is 40 newtons to the left. So, thinking about our total, total velocity questions, if the directions are the same, we add, and if the directions are different, we subtract. Here we're going to add. So, our total force, our net force, is 70 newtons to the left. Remember, your force needs a direction as well as a unit, which is always newtons. Here we have the tug of war. All right, we're going to do our workout. The boys team pulls 150 newtons to the left. The girls team pulls 180 newtons to the right. Are we going to add or subtract? It will be subtract because our directions are different. Our answer will be 30 newtons, and we choose the direction of the larger number, just like velocity. So as it turns out, in fact, the girls will win because they're applying more force. Go girls. Here's another tug of war. We have two dogs. One pulls with five newtons to the left, the other with three newtons to the right. We are going to subtract because the directions are different. Our answer is two newtons, and we select left for our answer because it's the direction of the larger number. Okay, here we are moving a box. We have multiple parts now. Rachel pushes with 20 newtons right. That should be a right, shouldn't it? I guess I made them all left. My bad. All right. And Alyssa is going to push with 22 newtons to the right or the left, as the case may be. The main idea here is that, of course, we are going to be pushing in the same direction, so we will add for a total of 42 newtons to the right. Balanced forces. Okay. We need to know if a force is balanced or unbalanced. It's very, very simple. Forces are balanced only when the net force is equal to zero. So a simple question, is it balanced or unbalanced? Is it equal to zero? Then it's balanced. Is it not equal to zero? Then it's unbalanced. All right, here we have a monkey pulling with 40 newtons down. The vine is going to resist with 40 newtons up. When we do the math, we come out with a net force of zero newtons. This is a balanced force. Happy monkey gets to stay in the tree. 
Here is an example of an unbalanced force. It's anything other than zero. The monkey is still applying a force to the vine of 40 newtons down, but this is a puny vine. They can only resist with 20 newtons up. When we do the math, we subtract and we find out that the net force is 20 newtons down. That is an unbalanced force. The monkey is destined to fall out of the tree. Poor little monkey. All right, so now we're going to do some balanced and unbalanced force questions. Okay, here's Chastity with her books. We have 20 newtons up, 16 newtons down. We're going to subtract. We're going to choose the direction of the larger answer, 4 newtons up. So Chastity is applying an unbalanced force to these books. All right, here we are moving the furniture. Matt is lifting with 30 newtons up. Gravity is exerting 30 newtons down. We subtract and we get an answer of zero newtons. This is a balanced force. Matt is not able to help me move the furniture. Too bad, because I do that a lot, don't I? Right, so this brings us now that we understand force and balanced force. This brings us to the first law. One of three. Enjoy it. This is your entry to Newton's laws. It kind of says a lot, doesn't it? An object at rest will remain at rest unless acted on by an unbalanced force. It's going to stay still unless you apply a force strong enough to move it. That's what it says. An object in motion continues in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. If it's moving, it's going to keep moving until you apply a force to stop it. That's what Newton's saying. If it's still, it's going to stay still till you apply a force to make it go. If it's moving, it's going to stay moving until you apply a force to make it go. Here's the scoop on moving objects. What if I kick a soccer ball? Some of you are doing that behind me on the field right now. If I kick a soccer ball, is it going to keep going and going and going forever? No. Okay, here's what happens. We are on Earth. We have gravity. Gravity brings things in contact with the ground and other things, and they experience friction. Gravity and friction constantly provide an unbalanced force which causes objects to eventually stop moving. That's why your soccer ball does not go all the way around the globe and come back to you five weeks later. All right? Gravity and friction stop it moving before it can even reach the road. In space, there's essentially no friction. There's no air and there's very few particles, so there's very little friction. Gravity causes changes in the motion of the objects as they're orbiting something, like orbiting the sun, orbiting the earth, or even the moon. Gravity changes their motion, but they generally don't slow down. All right, so we'll talk some about space when we get to the astronomy unit. We're mostly going to concern ourselves right now with objects on Earth. Okay. So now we're going to do some examples. Here's a picture, all right? Remember, Newton's first law says an object at rest stays at rest until the unbalanced force. An object in motion stays in motion until the unbalanced force. Let's look at this picture. Here's what we should be seeing. The soccer ball is at rest, right? It's here on the ground. Tigger is going to apply an unbalanced force by kicking it, and then it will be in motion. Newton says, the object at rest stays at rest until the unbalanced force is applied. Here's another example. Poor guy. Right? The pie was in motion. We can tell by those lines there. So helpful. The man's face applied an unbalanced force, which caused the pie to become at rest. Or if that sounds awkward to you, you could just say, stop moving or become still, all right? But I chose that term at rest because that's part of like the key words from Newton's first law. Okay, so the pie was moving, the man's face applied a force, the pie is now at rest. Key words right there. Inertia, this is our last concept. This is directly related to Newton's first law. In fact, sometimes it's called the law of inertia. Inertia is the tendency of an object to resist changes in its motion. We're going to do something with this on Monday when I get back um, and have objects with different amounts of inertia and see what you think about changing their motion. Just imagine a heavy object, it's harder to get it moving, and it's definitely harder to stop it. Do you want to push a car to get it moving? That's hard work. Do you want to stand in front of a car to stop it? I'll bet that you don't. That car has a lot of inertia. Even if it's going slowly, it's hard to change its motion. Inertia is determined by the amount of mass an object has. 
more mass, more inertia. Which of the dogs in this picture has more inertia? Our answer is, of course, the dog with more mass. Imagine you had to uh, push this dog off the couch instead of this dog off the couch. This dog's a lot harder to move around. Likewise, if he's running at top speed because he thinks you have treats, it's going to be harder to stop him than this little guy here. You could probably do it with one hand. Okay? More inertia, less inertia. More mass, less mass.